Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year. I'm so sorry that I've been gone. I know I feel like I always have some kind of intro, but I've been super sick. I guess everyone in New York is feeling super sick because I snapchatted something and everyone was writing to me like, girl, I feel you with the sinus issues. So it's been like five degrees here in New York at night. So I got sick even though I've been indoors and it killed me because I really wanted to get these videos out, but that's all right. We're here now, 2018. I want to do a whole video just talking about like my goals for 2018 and what's going to be changing and what I'm going to be doing differently this year. So I hope you guys are excited for that. But today I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about my 2017 all-time beauty favorites. And even though I do YouTube and I try out so much makeup, there's some products that I just can't stop using and didn't stop using in 2017. So I'm going to go category by category and I'm going to first start off with primers. The first primer that came to mind when I thought of 2017 was the Farsali Unicorn Essence. I'm 99% sure this was released in 2017 but this product blew up especially on Instagram it was just everywhere I would open up my Instagram and I would see everyone with these purple tears the hype is so real I love this stuff so what I love about this is that it gives me a sticky feeling to my face which probably sounds weird but the foundation really adheres to your face when you have that sticky base so I just apply a couple of drops I rub it in and then you wait a couple of minutes and you'll actually feel that your skin is getting a little bit sticky and I feel like that's the true test for a primer because pore minimizing primers are great you know they're smoothing but for the rest of your face you really want the cheek products and just your foundation to last longer so it has to adhere to your face so this gives you a nice hydrated but not too too oily base it's just the perfect in between any skin type can use this so I really really love that in 2017 but because I do have dry skin I fell in love with the Smashbox photo finish primerizer again this was released in 2017 and I was so happy when Smashbox came out with this because a lot of primers are just either smoothing or mattifying. There aren't too many hydrating primers, so this one's awesome because you can use it as your moisturizer and primer. And when they say moisturizing, they are not kidding. This stuff is super, super, super moisturizing. I mean, you put it on and it just feels like a glass of water just along your skin. It's so nice. It has hyaluronic acid and I'm just not running out of it. So you don't really need a lot. You need one or two pumps and you're good to go. I have to shout out these two primers. Dr. Brandt pours no more. This actually made it to my 20. 16 beauty favorites because it's so dang good. Actually, this one did too, I'm pretty sure. Benefit Professional. These two are my ride or dies when it comes to filling in the more porous area, which is around my nose and actually on my nose. So these two babies will smooth out your canvas. And because Dr. Brand is a skincare brand, they know skincare, so this isn't going to clog your pores. It's nice and smoothing, almost has like a cooling effect. I love both of these. They keep that area matte. I know everyone has mentioned Tarte Shape Tape in their 2017 favorites, but it's for good reason. I feel like everyone already knows like Tarte Shape Tape is the truth. A little trick that I like to do is NARS Creamy Concealer mixed in with the Tarte Shape Tape. So my trick when I'm putting on my concealer is I put the Tarte Shape Tape kind of lower like right on the bone and then I never really put concealer right up in the driest area. I like to apply this right on top and then with my Beauty Blender I like to blend upwards. This way all that product isn't sitting on your driest area because I feel like that's when it starts to look cakey. So if you're suffering from dry under eyes, under eyes eye cream is key at night especially but if you're doing under eye cream and you're still noticing that your under eyes are looking too cakey first rule is don't apply too much because I feel like if you use too much Tarte Shape Tape it's just not going to be good but also apply it lower and then work your way up with the beauty blender this way all that product isn't sitting right underneath your eyes so that's my little trick I love those two concealers but another concealer that I fell in love with in 2017 that was released in 2017 is the NARS soft matte concealer this one is also in custard I use custard in both and this is so awesome I love this as an under eye concealer because it's nice and matte but it's not drying if you really like a matte face this is so 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 nice and I also love it because you can use it on your eyelids as a primer you can use it to conceal your eyebrows because it does have a cream consistency I feel like it's just easier to use for under your eyebrows as opposed to a regular concealer so as I was going through my favorites video for the year it was actually comical how many times I mentioned this combo and you probably are saying it right now 
Maybelline Matte and Poreless L'Oreal Pro Matte Infallible. These two are a match made in heaven on their own. I love them. But in 2017, I discovered like my ultimate, most flawless foundation routine, and it is these two drugstore foundations. Maybelline Matte and Poreless, it's nice, it's liquidy, it doesn't dry super matte. The L'Oreal Pro Matte is a little bit thicker, it has a little bit more coverage. So together, they just give me like the best coverage, the best finish. It's what I have on now, and every time I wear this combo, I'm like, why don't I always use this combo? Because it's literally the best. My skin looks its best. I'm just a sucker for this combo. I will never stop repurchasing both of these. In the summer, I really like using L'Oreal on its own. In the winter, if I'm really, really dry and I, I still want my skin to look kind of like skin-like, I'll just use the matte and poreless. But for a super flawless face, I mix both of them and it's an awesome combination. You must try it if you haven't. But another foundation that I loved in 2017 from the drugstore is the L'Oreal Pro Glow. And at first I tried this in the summer and I was like, mm-mm, it's just too dewy for a dry skin person that's crazy you're like what you love dewy don't you but it was just like sliding off my face because I am a sweater so this I fell in love with more in the fall and winter and it is awesome of course I have to mention Estee Lauder double wear I mean this is just a holy grail of holy grails forever and ever it's very comparable to the L'Oreal Pro Matte it's like the high-end version of it these two last forever on the skin if you are going out at night and you want your makeup to last like all day all night this is the way to go it's literally like super super glue on your face but it is on the matte side so if you have very dry skin you do have to prep for this one you want to exfoliate you want to really really hydrate before using this but this is an oily skin person's best friend it's so good and I mean everyone talks about it for a reason it's awesome and then my last foundation that I want to mention is the hourglass foundation stick this is the vanish foundation stick this is just so awesome I have dry skin and I love it I do again have to prep for this because if not I'll notice it getting a little cakey on my forehead and my nose so as long as I've exfoliated or used a mask the night before this looks so good on camera and in videos like this is truly Photoshop when you take a picture like when I snapchat and I have this on I'm just mesmerized and everyone's asking me, like what the hell do you have on your skin it looks flawless so it's this this stuff is magical and I love that it's so quick and easy to use you just swipe 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 and you're good to go so this is like my lazy girl face tune in a bottle let's talk about some bronzers and contours the first one's actually a foundation stick but I use it to contour it's the Clinique chubby in the nude foundation stick I went through two of these in 2017, which says a lot because I'm only using it to contour, but this is just such a nice, warm, it's not really a contour, it's more of like a bronzer shade. If I really want my bronzer to last, or like where I contour to last, I apply a cream underneath it because then the powder adheres to it and it just, it stays snatched all day and all night. So if I'm going out, I for sure use this. Or if I'm going for a really simple look, I'll just use this and lightly set it. So I feel like people think cream contour, oh my god, so dramatic but actually it's the opposite because creams on a foundation it's like cream on cream it just looks like skin if you have very dry skin cream bronzer can be your best friend if you're finding that your bronzers are looking patchy try a cream but I really like using a foundation stick because it's just a lot more seamless a lot more flawless and then this is also something that I use for another purpose this is a concealer this is the LA girl pro concealer in toast but I use it to cream contour my nose it is very pigmented so you want to be careful with this but it's not too cool and it's not too warm it's the perfect in between and I, I just love it for the nose and for bronzers of course I'm going to mention my Mac MSFs this is give me Sun when I'm tan I love this it's so warm and when I'm my regular skin tone I use this one which is dark golden so you can see the difference right there give me Sun and dark golden they're both so nice they're thin powders they don't look chalky or cakey on me I hate when my contour looks like gray or dry or it's like clinging to things it's just a no-no these definitely don't do that for me I love the formula on that in 2017 I also abused my Mac blushes I feel like in different months I was mentioning different colors this one is gingerly which I loved in the later part of 2017 but throughout 2017 I abused peaches desert rose the formula is just like it's foolproof it's just a a great regular blush you can really pack it on or you can do like a light wash of it which I like having that control for powders of course good old Laura came through in 2017 Laura Mercier translucent setting powder is just an OG product for me I mean it's just gonna be in my kit and in my life forever we just have like this bond like if I use this on someone I know it's not gonna play me and I, I appreciate that it's never gonna give flashback which is so important 2018 we're definitely not gonna do it so good old Laura comes through in the clutch 
but it can be a little bit drying if you're using it really often. So I fell in love with the Derma Blend Loose Setting Powder and also Translucent in 2017 for my drier days because if I skip under eye cream for a couple days and I use Laura, you will see it. But if I use the Derma Blend, you won't. So I have it on now and it's just flawless. And then good old Charlotte Tilbury was my baby in 2017. This is the Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in Medium. This is such a great like no-nonsense powder that you could just powder your whole face with even despite if you have dry skin and it won't play you it won't leave you dry which is so important for me like me and powders it can go really bad but with this one it doesn't so I love this it truly is a flawless finish and it's just such a great finely milled smooth flawless powder I love setting my face with this moving along to highlights I always rave about this but I feel like no one understands me when I talk about this this is Mirabella swirling pearl now Mirabella is like a mineral makeup brand that's like sold online a lot of people don't talk about it but this is such an amazing highlight especially when I am like an NC 20 NC 30 one of my biggest pet peeves with makeup is when I put on a highlight and I look in the mirror and it looks dark it's blinding but if you you look straight on and it looks dark it's just it's not for me so this one never does that so I love love this I fell in love with this this is the hourglass ambient strobe light palette these are a bit on the fair side I really wish that hourglass would come out with like a golden bronze version because they're light but I did fall in love with the formula. It's just mm, so good. If you like that luminous glow, you don't like sparkles, this is so awesome. It just looks like skin, and I really like that. For a golden highlight, this one's so nice because it's not a yellow gold. It's more of a golden gold. Does that make sense? Like a bronzy gold. It's Laura Geller Gilded Honey. Again, this is another formula that is very gel-like. It's a baked formula, so it's just not going to accentuate your texture. And I have a lot of texture on my cheeks. If I'm using the wrong highlight, it'll accentuate it but these that I'm mentioning don't do that the Kiko 208 eyeshadow and this one is an amazing eyeshadow but as a highlight it is just gorgeous it's such a pretty gold it's very similar to the Gilded Honey but it's a little bit lighter so it just is a bit brighter so this last one is the 208 and that is Gilded Honey so as you can see it just has a little bit more of that yellowness to it and it's just it's blinding it's so stunning and again not gonna accentuate texture because as you can see that's a theme for me. Anything that's not going to make me look dry on my dry skin is a winner. And the last highlight that I want to mention is Artist Couture Conceited. Oh, this is just my baby. I love this. This is my favorite color out of all of them. If you like a glittery highlight, then this one is for you. It definitely is blinding. I have it on now. It has so much sparkle. So if you don't like sparkles, stay far away from this one because the sparkles are there. Right now, I can use it on its own and it's just... Mm, so good. In 2017, I discovered the Dior Brow Styler in black. I had always known about this, but they released the black shade in 2017, and I never looked back. It's what I have on my brows. It's a fine tip. It's very expensive. I hate rebuying this, but it's so good. I personally, like, struggle with my brows because I just hate spending so much time on them, so whatever's gonna make my life easier is a winner, and if you have really dark hair, try this one because I feel like it just doesn't make my brows look like black block brows. Sometimes when I use my Amazon Anastasia pencils on their own or the one I'm about to show you next on their own it just can be very intense very quick so this is just a nice foolproof one and it just doesn't deposit so much color so you can work in small sections and have a really nice natural looking snatched brow and then this one is the benefit precisely my brow this one is in the shade 4 but I go between 4 and 5 I love both this one is awesome because it's so pigmented and so creamy that when you're trying to do your tail if you don't have hair there this one will just glide on that area so five is a little bit dark but when I'm going out I do use it on the ends of my brows so these are the two pencils that I use when I want my best brows in 2017 I pretty much only used two pencil liners a brown and a black so the brown is Mac Costa Riche I mean if your eye color is like a brown or a hazel you need Costa Riche like today it's definitely the red undertones that make eyes pop with this but on my brown eyes it just makes them look lighter it makes them look almost hazel it's crazy it, like pull the colors out of my eyes and I'm obsessed with that and it lasts all day and all night and then the only eyeliner that I pretty much use to tight line is Marc Jacobs Blacker another pencil liner that I fell in love with all 2017 I went through one hole in 2017 so I just repurchased one so it 
lasts a really long time. It doesn't irritate my eyes. It just stays on all day. I can tight line and it won't transfer to my bottom, which is my number one thing for an eyeliner. I hate tight lining and it transferring to my waterline. It just, it doesn't, no, I don't like that. So this one doesn't do that. So he's going to stick with me forever and ever. For liquid liners, I pretty much only used two in 2017. The Tom Ford Deeper Liquid Liner is amazing. The tip on this one is so fine. It actually comes with two tips. So if you want a really teeny tiny one precise when you have that I don't really use that one I use this longer thinner felt pen one and it just creates your wing for you it literally just it's so foolproof it's so expensive it's Tom Ford but this lasts so long I've never ever experienced a liner last this long so you really are paying for the quality because if you're using like a Stila liquid liner or even just a Kat Von D those are awesome but I find with those they run out in like a month so they're $20 but you keep repurchasing them every other month which makes no sense so I invested in this and I never looked back so in 2017 when I was wearing wing liner it was either that one or the balm Schwing or a combination of both I know crazy but that one the only thing is that it's not a matte finish which bothers me so much this is so intense it's so pigmented it's literally like just ink it's just so awesome but it's matte so I love this one the only thing is I prefer the tip on the Tom Ford so I create the wing with the Tom Ford and then I track it with this one to make it super black and matte because I don't like a shiny liner right now I have just the Tom Ford and as you can see it kind of has like a shine so if I'm going out I track it with the bomb swing and of course MAC extended play Giga black I mean all of 2017 it's the only mascara that I will ever use on my bottom lashes because it doesn't transfer down onto my skin which no other mascara has pretty much ever done like they all transfer onto my skin. I'm not gonna chance it with anything else ever again. MAC Extended Plate, and it has to be the Giga Black because that's the waterproof one. So that's my ride or die. So for eyeshadows, I'm gonna shock you guys, or maybe I'm not. I don't have any like pre made palettes, like any palettes to show you because all of my favorites are individual shadows. So here I have my Makeup Geek shadows that I just put into this little Z palette. I also have my Anastasia single shadows that I use pretty much on a daily in my kit. It's just awesome. So pigmented. I find the quality in these single shadows to be so much better than the actual palettes. No shade to Anastasia. I love the Mario palette. That one's, I think, my favorite out of all of the palettes. The quality is just there when you buy the single shadows. It's more expensive, obviously, to do it that way, but I feel like you just get more bang for your buck. You know exactly what colors you're picking that you want that's going to benefit you, whereas in a palette, you have, like, eight duds that you're, like, never using, or you force yourself to use once, and then that's it, and then you never use it again. So that's my gripe with palettes is, like, it's never the perfect one for me. Either the quality is compromised or the colors are compromised and I'm just not trying to compromise so of course I had to I had to makeup forever single eyeshadow so they redid these but let me know if you still want to see it with these round shadows so they changed them to squares I'm pretty sure the colors are still the same apparently the formulas changed a little bit but I already invested in this whole thing so if you want to see a video on these because I have them like labeled I know the colors I can do swatches let me know but 2017 this was this was just my everything. This is life changing. So if you're struggling with eyeshadow and you feel like it's taking you too long to blend, Makeup Forever I got you boo. So you don't have to get obviously so many, you just get the ones you like. I feel like you get way more bang for your buck that way. Yeah, that way. And lastly, for eyeshadows, I guess you can say eyeshadow. It's liquid eyeshadow. This is a Stila Kit and Karma. I also love Rose Gold Retro. These are the Magnificent, I mean, you probably already know what this is, but the Magnificent Glitter and Glow. And they did come up with new colors. I just wish they would come out with like more neutral shades. I know everyone loves like the holographic, but like these have so much silver to them. I just wish they were more like on the golden bronzy side because I, I mean, it's a pink, but it, it reflects silver. But nonetheless, this will give you that super dramatic glam look. It's very glittery. You definitely have to use a glitter eyeshadow primer when using this or else you're going to have glitter all over your face, which isn't fun. But these are awesome and whenever I wanted something very glam, I went for these. You can also use a brush and do like a liner, like a glitter liner with this. So I really enjoyed this. But again, Rose Gold Retro is my favorite out of all of them because I feel like that one is just like a true rose gold. So now moving on to lips. I feel like I really beat you over the head with this one. But this is the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in London. Ah, oh, it's just my baby. Granted, it does get a little bit dry, especially like now in the winter time. Like I probably could use a gloss right now, but that's okay. I just, I love the color so much. 
when I'm tan, this is just like the perfect light nude. But I also abused Relactic Bashful, which is a little bit more on the pinky rosy side. So if you like more of a neutral NYX London, if you like more of a rosy pink nude, then Relactic Bashful is, I mean, I've been raving about this for, I feel like, years now. This one's a little bit later to the game, but... Just in general, like red liquid lipstick or red lipstick. Whenever I wanted like a pop of color, I just, I go for red. I don't know what it is. I used to wear like burgundies and for 2018, that's my goal is to experiment more with like burgundies, plums, like darker colors or even like pinks, like true pinks. But there's just something about red lipstick. Of course, anyone can use red lipstick, but black hair with red lipstick is just so good. I didn't even say what this one is. The Fenty Stunna Bomb Formula. I mean, she killed it with this one. It's just... It's the perfect red. I mean, you can be a hater all you want, but you have to admit that this is the most perfect red that you've ever seen in your life. So Rihanna did that. And speaking of Rihanna, her Fenty Beauty Gloss is also one of my favorites for 2017. This will literally make your lips look beyond juicy. It's truly a universal nude lip gloss. It's so good. It's always sold out. I mean, look at that shine. And I have two more glosses, Marc Jacobs. I feel like you guys know, like you know, because a lot of you guys purchase things that I rave about because I put a lot of products to the test. So these are like must-haves. This is Marc Jacobs' Pretty Thing. It's lighter, as you can see, as the, than the Fenty one. Marc Jacobs' Pretty Thing is literally my number one gloss ever because it's just, it's pigmented enough, it's shiny, it's not sticky. Pretty Thing is my favorite. I do like Sugar Sugar as well. And then the last gloss or last lip product is the Kiko 3D Hydra Gloss. This one is in the shade 19. I also love the shade 03. Kiko is such an inexpensive brand and just look at that shade. It's like the perfect neutral nude and these are so shiny. I'm really into very shiny lip glosses. If the lip gloss doesn't shine, I mean, like, what's the point of wearing a lip gloss? I need it to be shiny and I need it to not be sticky. So these three are like my favorites for 2017. For perfume for 2017, I discovered like like my must-have perfume. This is the Mason Francis Carcajan Baccarat. It's expensive smelling, but it's also expensive to buy. It's, I literally want to smell like this for my whole life. It's just so good. It's sweet. It has a little bit of masculinity to it because it is a unisex one. Another perfume that I want to mention is Balenciaga Flora Botanica. This one is so yummy. I literally think of fashion when I smell this. It just... It's just so nice. You have to smell it. I feel like this scent is very unique. So I love Flora Botanica. And of course, Juliet has a gun, not a perfume. This is like my daily perfume. It doesn't bother your nose. It doesn't bother anyone else's nose. It's so nice. It's soft. It's feminine. And it lasts forever. You only need a little bit of this. And I just love that it's not offensive. You can wear this every single day. I love this. It's going to be with me forever and ever. And for setting sprays, I abused Scandinavia Makeup Finishing spray in bridal this is just the best setting spray in my opinion it truly makes your makeup last longer most setting sprays i feel like it's kind of all in your head you know you put it on you're like yeah it's gonna make my makeup last longer but then you don't notice this one truly like it's just it glues your face down but it doesn't make your face feel sticky or weird and it doesn't break me out so love this but also mac fix plus 2017 i went through way too many of these i go through this like it's literal water and this is just so nice and hydrating it mends all of the makeup together so you don't look dry those two are my ride or dies i also love the tatcha dewy skin mist but for 2017 these were definitely the ones i went through the most so i feel like they were my favorites all year and they're gonna be my favorites i know in 2018 i would love to know what was your 2017 favorite product of of the year it could be like a game-changing product for your makeup application i would love to try it out if i have it so that concludes this video please don't forget to subscribe let's get to 300,000 subscribers i know we can do it just please don't forget to share my channel share my videos that definitely helps me out and liking the video also helps me out let's chat in the comments thank you for watching this video and i'll see you in my next one bye guys